I used the Mark IV HMC by Facewear to capture all of Enzo's facial motion performances, and using the Facewear and Accents integration, I was able to record the face and body simultaneously. I did not use timecode for this project, and one reason was that I was unable to bring it in via FBX for the body data. So for the dialogue scene where the audio and face data needed to be synced correctly, I captured additional reference video using my DSLR camera, which also recorded the audio, and by syncing the DSLR and HMC footage, I was able to sync my audio. I was also able to make sure that each frame matched up correctly from start to finish, and this also helped me to time certain things like tongue movement during the fine-tuning process with the face control rig. The process for capturing my motion capture performance begins with setting up all of the mocap hardware. With the XN suit already on, I put on the Mark IV HMC. The Mark IV communicates with a key pro through a Teradek transmitter and receiver, and the key pro is used to record the facial performance. Then I put the gloves on. And all of this hardware and software I'm using is powered by a custom Puget Systems workstation tailored specific for this workflow and is capable of running everything in real time on a single machine. I calibrate the gloves in Manus Core, and with the Accents and Manus integration in MVN, I calibrate the suit. In the MVN network streamer, I set up a connection so that Accents can broadcast start and stop triggers that Facewear's software Shepard can listen for, and which also communicates with the key pro. Right when I hit record in MVN, my body and face data is being recorded simultaneously. I do a clap and a blink as an additional marker, and then I capture ROM before I record my first animation, so that I can use this to create a profile by retargeting my facial motion data directly onto Enzo in real time, while making adjustments in Facewear Studio to match up our expressions as close as possible. For the facial motion data to stream into Unreal, I use the Glassbox Live Client plugin which allows Facewear and Unreal to communicate by working independently of LiveLink, and this also gives Facewear the processing power it needs to run the facial solver faster, which is especially important for picking up micro-expressions. I create a child blueprint of Enzo, so that the blueprint modification I make to capture the facial performance will only affect this copy. I add the Facewear Live component to the blueprint, change the configuration to the port number, and with the face component selected, I assign the motion logic blueprint created specifically for metahumans. This particular motion logic blueprint has been created by Norman Wang from Glassbox. And by having this already set up, it saves me the time it would take to create my own. Every pose has its own corresponding curve that can be modified, so that when the data streams in, it filters through this and can be tailored to your talent. With Enzo in the map, I add a live link component so that I can see my data without having to press play or simulate. Inside of Facewear Studio, I'm gonna load a video I captured with the Mark IV and calibrate a neutral pose. This has been captured at 60 frames per second and I'm using the professional head cam face tracking model. Using the grid overlay, I check to make sure my framing is correct. I check my port number and that my control schema is set to standard. And then I turn stream to client on. Now, if I press play, I can see Enzo come to life instantly. I use the ROM I captured at the start of this session to create a profile by going through the performance to see if any of the values need to be adjusted for different areas of the face. For Enzo, it was the first time I used the motion effects in order to make a few offsets to the eye area. I found for certain poses, such as the inner brow up, it would cause the eyes to look down. Using the motion effects, I was able to correct this. To show you how I use the motion effects, I have set the profile settings back to default. When I get to this section where I'm raising my brows, I can see the eyes look down. With the inner brow activated, we can see this causes the eyes to look down. In the motion effects tab, I'm going to select new effect and select the primary control which is the eyes look down. The effect I want to select is reduced by and the secondary control is the inner brow up. As soon as I hit confirm, we can see the result of this motion effect. And we can also decrease or increase the value of the effect it has. Besides the motion effects, I also use the multiplier to adjust the values for certain poses. For example, I want to increase the values for the mouth smile left and mouth smile right, the mouth lower down, and the cheek squint. 
For the mouth right and mouth left, I want to reduce these values. But there may be times where the multiplier can reduce the range of motion for certain poses, like the eyes wide, for example. I can decrease these using the multiplier, but by doing so, I'm reducing the expressiveness for these poses. So another option is to use the Glassbox Live Client Control Profile. I've changed the values for the eyes wide back to 100%, and inside of this project where I have this already set up, with Enzo selected in his blueprint details, I can access the values for each pose directly in the editor. If I select the eye wide left, I can see the corresponding curve for this pose, and I can also simulate what this pose is supposed to look like when it is not activated, what it looks like when it's activated halfway, and when it's fully activated. And this is a good way to spot problematic poses that are either over or under activated. If I turn on this print value option, it will display the values for this pose in the editor. And I can use this information in order to modify the curve for this pose. So for example, if I assign the value for this halfway point to be displayed as a 0.3 instead of a 0.5, I'm able to maintain the range of motion for this pose in the event that Enzo needs to look surprised and hit a value of one. And this can also be used to give Enzo personality. So if I wanted Enzo's smile to be less expressive on one side, by first seeing what each pose looks like activated, I can adjust the curves for the smile left and mouth lower down using the print value as a reference. Now to demonstrate how I recorded my data in Unreal, I will use this dialogue performance I captured with my DSLR camera at 60 frames per second. I've already created a profile for it using the multiplier and motion effects. You can get good data with Facewear even without an HMC, and I recommend you pay attention to your lighting and framing and take the time to create a profile. Inside of this map I've created to record the data, I want to be able to see my frame rates as I start to optimize this. With the performance paused at the moment a blink is occurring, I will use this as a visual marker to indicate the start of my recording since I'm not using timecode. I'm going to lower Enzo's LOD to 2 to bring my frame rates up, and since my data is captured at 60 frames, I want to record it at 60 frames in Unreal. I'm also going to select only the face animation component to be recorded, as Take Recorder in UE5 uses significant resources, so this reduces the processing power it will use. I've gone ahead and hit record. With my 4K screen capture turned off, my frame rates are a solid 120, which is exactly what I want in order to prevent any breaks in the data during this process. And when I'm done recording, I end up with an animation file. And since I have the eyes closed at the start, this will be my marker for syncing it with the clap from the body data in sequence or later. Again, I use this DSLR data to demonstrate the recording process. And this was also how I got Enzo's facial performances into Unreal. In the next video, I will be going over the fine tuning process I did with Enzo's body and facial performances using Control Rig in Unreal.